Start by contacting Symantec Technical Support and referencing tech number 223404. Once contacting support, you'll receive the download information for the new Ghost Boot Disk Creator 3.0. You'll also want to take a look at downloading the user guide, the WinPE 4.0 using BootWiz document, in addition to the download of the Ghost Boot Disk Creator, the Windows Automated Installation Kit is necessary. The information on the Automated Installation Kit can be found in the Using Boot Wizard document. The link and instructions, uh, both that we'll be following, can be found here. After contacting Symantec, you can get the download location and password. Download the Boot Wiz files and save them locally. Once the download is complete, locate the Boot Wiz uh, zip file and extract it. You want to move the extracted files to the program files. In my case, it's a 64-bit machine, so I've copied them to the program files x86 folder. You want to open the bootwiz folder and open the subfolder. Look at the bootwiz.exe. If we right-click, we can send to desktop, create shortcut to make shortcut on the desktop for easy navigation. In addition to the bootwiz download from Symantec technical support, you'll also need to get the Windows Automated uh, Deployment Kit from Microsoft and can be downloaded in the following link. The link is found in the Windows PE 4.0 using BootWiz document. It'll take you to the Microsoft uh, Download Center. If your download doesn't start, of course, click here to run. We do want to run the installer. This 1.6 meg file is not the actual Windows uh, Automated Kit. Rather, it is the downloader for it. So we will go ahead and run that. Once the assessment and deployment kit comes up, we'll go ahead and stick with the default locations. Go ahead and next. Next on the join customer experience. Uh, you can do so if you choose. Select accept. The only components that we're going to need are the Windows pre-installation environment and the deployment tools. Go ahead and select only those. This download can take quite some time, so we'll go ahead and skip to the end. Once the assessment and deployment kit's downloaded, go ahead and close this window. We don't need to launch the Getting Started Guide. Launch the Boot Wizard from the bootwiz.exe shortcut that we had placed on the desktop. Select the Windows PE 4.0 x86 and browse to the pre-installed wake files. So we'll go down to Program Files x86, down to Windows Kits. Select the 8.0 subfolder and select OK and Next. This will import the necessary Windows PE files into the Ghost Boot Wizard folder. Later we'll see that there's a new subfolder in there for the Windows files. This process will take a little while, so we'll skip over to the end. Once it's finished, we can go ahead and click the Finish, and we will close any pop-ups that happen. Highlight Tools and Install Preboot Operating System. Select the Windows PE X64. Select pre-installed wake and browse again to the Windows kits, the 8.0 folder, as we did before. This process will take a while, so we'll skip ahead to the end. We can click finish, and now we're ready to build our first configuration. Right-click configuration, select new configuration, enter a name for your configuration. Might boot disk will be fine. We can also enter description for what this disk is for and any changes that we're going to make to it later can be notated here. Make sure and select the OEM extension of GSS. This is the ghost files as we want the ghost files on this disk. Loading drivers can take some time. Later we'll look at the options on this screen for adding drivers. For now though we'll do next. 
obtain an IP address automatically. These are the various components that we could add to our PE package. The default items are selected or the needed items are selected, but for now we're going to leave it alone. Click Next. Summary of what's happening here. Next, Finish. And now we have, in the background, we can see we have a configuration with the name that we've created it. And by default, it's going to go ahead and allow us to create a boot disk. We'll continue with that thought. We are going to create a boot disk rather than using the automation folder install. Primarily, we have the option for ISO uh, to make a CD or a disk like a USB drive. The type of boot disk that we're going to want to create is a standalone boot disk. This is going to have the Ghost tools and have all of the necessary files to launch Ghost. From this tutorial, we'll use a disk. Sometimes the external drive will not be listed, and we will have to choose a fixed disk to show the drive. We'll go ahead and plug that in now. There we go, and my drive is now identified. I'm standalone boot, and it is a disk. It is going to format the disk, make sure you have a backup of anything on it. And we can also choose if we want a 64-bit or 32-bit boot disk. Either is fine for most hardware sets. Do know that when you add drivers, you'll need to be adding drivers for the disk that you're creating. If you're creating a 64-bit disk, you'll need to be adding 64-bit drivers later. Go ahead and next. This process can take quite some time as we prepare the PE files open the WIM, put in our files, finalize the WIM, compress the WIM, and so forth. We'll fast forward through this. After the WIM file is done building, it'll ask one last time if we're sure that we want to write to the removal disk, which we are going to end up erasing. In this case, yes, I do want to create that disk to be a boot disk. This process will take a while as well as it copying the files to the boot disk. After the disk is created successfully, we can go ahead and close the wizard. And you're ready to try booting from that disk.